What's up everybody, it's Treble Free, AKA the Treble Chef. I'm not really a chef, I just cook a lot. Uh, shout out to the real chefs, Brent Hughes, Kayla Sykes, Chef Pat, oh yeah, Chef Pat in the house, Sir Berryman, Alfredo sauce. This is something that I decided to film. I had lots of co-workers and friends asking me about this Alfredo sauce and how I make it from scratch. Shout out to Maria. This is basically my process and procedure that I've tried and tested and did different things with. Feel free to edit or change any of the steps as you see fit. As a disclaimer, there are some things you may want to change when doing this for yourself. I don't claim to have any health information on any of this and this recipe is not intended to cure treat or prevent any diseases okay thanks we're gonna start with the mise en place and the procedure what I do here two cups of the chicken broth I measure about two cups in here Let's get that to the two cup mark and stop if you are vegetarian, vegetable broth will work just fine. Um, you can also use chicken stock. Using chicken stock just controls your salt content a little more, but that's totally a taste thing up to you. Wine. I actually started out doing the sauce using very cheap Chardonnays like Sutter Home or whatever simple, basic, you know, one you can get from the grocery store without paying too much. So you basically want to use about a cup of this. You're just going to add it on top of the broth here. So what I'm gonna do, get myself to three cups here with that. You see the cream cheese here. This is about eight ounces of cream cheese that I cubed. Minced onions here, fine dice on them, nice and small so they don't invade the sauce. You don't want big onion chips in your sauce. Butter, of course. So you're gonna do the roux. Now with that roux, it's gonna be equal amounts of butter and flour in this case. One stick of butter, two, boom, half cup of flour. See the one slash two right there, yes. Seasoning wise, shout out to Janine on this one here. She put me up on the Goya Sazon, Sazon. I use that, one packet of that, as well as about, um, I will go with two tablespoons of the Old Bay seasoning, and only two tablespoons because uh, you can of course do one or two depending on your particular taste. I did this prior to today's festivities. This is roasted garlic, oiled with the olive oil that you saw over there earlier, and uh, cut the heads, uh, the tops off, and then just wrapped it in some foil. Bake that 325 for about an hour, um, and I'm just gonna squeeze that right on out and use that in the sauce later. Whisk it right in, um, in this case. If you don't want to do roasted garlic Alfredo, um, which may be a style choice because you're um, going to put seafood or whatever in it and you don't want it to overpower the seafood. Feel free to use um, about one to two or three cloves of minced garlic. Um, I recommend getting the garlic cloves yourself and mincing them um, instead of using the minced garlic out the jar. I've already had myself and my attitude smacked really quickly for using the jarred minced garlic. Shout out to Alicia, never again ma'am. I understood very clear. Also here in the pre-done stage, this is, these are some chicken breasts that I did. Um, just seared and finished in a 450 degree oven. I'm gonna dice those up and put them in because I am making roasted garlic chicken Alfredo. The pasta is totally up to you. It's your choice. I like using cavatappi, that's my you know, personal one, I like to use that or bow tie. In this Alfredo, um, I've gotten used to using basic Parmesan um, as well as uh, Romano cheeses and then the cream cheese as well that you're seeing here, um, along with the heavy cream, one cup pre-poured as you see. The cheese is totally up to you. Um, I've used um, Parmesan only, it yields a sharper taste. Um, when I use Parmesan along with Romano and other blends that are listed here that you can clearly see there. Um, it sort of mutes the taste a little bit so it's not as pungent or strong, but that's totally up to you once again. Um, if you prefer a spicier Alfredo sauce, you may want to add some jalapenos. I found a really nice one that works out very well is this. Pinzi's uh, crushed jalapenos. The uh, these work very well. 
But of course, if you don't want spicy, no need to do spicy. That's totally your choice. Next step, this is a five quart pot. If you have four quarts, it's okay too. Um, you wanna use a taller pot. Uh, one of my friends mentioned having one of these, a taller pot, so to speak. That's okay too. However, whatever works for you. I do recommend using a whisk for this sauce to you know, get everything an even good mix. That's my personal recommendation. So into this, the stick of butter. Temperature wise, I have this on about, uh, you can see just about eight there. Butter's just about melted here. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the onions. So at this point here, onions have been introduced to the butter. Letting them get a little happy. About 30 seconds to a minute or so. Just enough, not too long, just to kind of get a little translucent. That happens very quickly. Then you're adding your flour and just mixing that in here. Make sure you get it nice and good and combined. I want it to completely coat. This is your rule, this is your beginning. This is where you're starting from to thicken your sauce. We're going to go ahead and cover that. And I like to go ahead and turn the heat down to about low, about the lowest setting you have, just off of low. About two will do good. I like to let that cook about five minutes um, because cooking the roux allows you to get that flour taste out. Here we are at the five minutes. The five minutes has elapsed. And we are looking at the roux. Now, well first, of course, this is going to look like a little bit of a baked whatever. But you don't want to frantic about that. It's just part of the process. So, just put the liquid in there. Now, mind you, again, that was the stock and wine. Now, at this point, kind of turn the heat back up to high or medium high. And we just start whisking this on through. And as it cooks, it's going to thicken. As you can see, we're already starting to get a bit of thickness here. It is thickening very quickly. The magic of cooking. That was silly, right? Anyway, now don't worry at first if your sauce is a little too thick. You always can introduce more liquids to loosen it. That is never a problem. It's actually a good thing to have it a little thick and then you can thin out as you need rather than having to have it too thin and having to thicken it later. Um, thickening it later, of course, you can use a slurry if you want or you can also make another roux in a separate pot off to the side. It's about this time that I go ahead and introduce the heavy cream. Now I'll usually do one cup of heavy cream. It's totally your choice to do more if you want. Um, I do about one cup what I figured out would be enough and I whisk that in as well combine that to everything else we have you're going to go and introduce your cheese I recommend turning the heat down to two again lower temperature and go ahead and introduce your cheese Recommend folding this in with the spatula here just to kind of cover the roux with your cheese just to get everything good and blended. You will notice a bit of stretch, if you will, but I would not worry about that at all. It's just part of the process and the procedure. And now this is going to look a little clumpy right now, but do not worry because as the cheese cooks into the sauce, it's going to smooth out. Give it a half hour to cook through, and periodically, about halfway through, you wanna go with your whisk there, um, of course, and kind of stir through it. So this is mid-melt. This is after about 15 minutes of cooking, as you can tell. 
This is mid melt. It's uh, the cheese is starting to cook into the sauce. You want to kind of stir. You see, you're still getting a little bit of stretch, but that's okay. You're going to see some oil uh, pop up from the cheese. Uh, basically, the cream cheese and the cheese sort of breaking. You're going to see that oil sort of bubble up. And just folding a little bit. So it's going to whisk a little bit here. Now, once again, this may be a little thick to your taste, but don't worry because there is always a possibility of thinning it out later. As a quick side note here, depending on what type of Alfredo you're making, if you're making a chicken Alfredo with veggies, this is a mix of kale and spinach, about eight ounces of kale and a quick handful of um, fresh spinach. Also about eight ounces of mushrooms that I quartered. That's the roasted garlic. If you are doing a seafood Alfredo, of course, you're going to skip this step. For me personally, I like to let the water of the vegetables um, loosen the sauce. This is what I figured out works very well. Um, if my sauce is too thick, the water that's contained within the mushrooms will release once they cook, as well as the water that's within the kale and the spinach, since they are water-bearing vegetables, they'll go ahead and sort of loosen up the sauce just good enough to coat. Um, if you are not putting veggies in your sauce, of course, feel free to use more broth to loosen up the sauce. I don't recommend more cream. I just recommend a little bit of broth just to loosen it to your taste. But when you loosen it, do it very carefully and sparingly in little doses because if you go too far, you'll have to re-thicken to get the consistency that you like. This is kind of where you want to start looking at it. Notice I have done it about 23 minutes here now. I already showed the halfway point. Um, this is about where you're not seeing any stretch in the cheese anymore. It's just kind of, you know, all sort of cooked into it. So you're about good here, roughly. You're about good here. And here's your sauce. This is where you have it. This is everything. I have found, personally, that this amount of sauce, properly done, um, coats about 16 ounces of pasta very well. Of course, you can use as much or as less as you like. That's totally up to you. It's at this point that I'm going to introduce my seasoning cocktail here. Of the Sazon. And the... Uh, Old Bay. I'm just going to whisk that on in, introduce that, get it real happy. Now I'll tell you from my own personal experience, the Sazon tends to make things very red. So that's kind of why we're getting that color we're getting now. Um, as I've put in the veggies, if you're doing that veggie optional step that we talked about just a few seconds ago here. Um, that will sort of loosen your sauce, and that's totally up to you. You'll find it to loosen. It's all the big deal. And that's totally your choice. So we're gonna pretty much stop here because this is the end of the road in terms of uh, the sauce cookery. And this is pretty much basically for the sauce you're making all you need to know. Now, additional tips, just to throw them out at you. At this point, um, if you're going to add meat, you want to do that later at the end once you've turned the sauce off completely. And this is pretty much it. This is your finished sauce. This is uh, with the chicken mixed in uh, veggies. Now, if you're noticing this consistency is too thick for you personally, that's totally fine. Uh, feel free to loosen it to your own particular taste. Um, I recommend using broth instead of water. Because uh, water will, as the word termed, will water down your sauce and take away your flavor. But broth will just consistently keep the flavor of what you have going on, sort of seasoning as you water down. And here is the finished Alfredo. This is with the noodles, the chicken, the spinach, the kale, and the roasted garlic. Enjoy!